but it's absolutely true. In fact, while much of the world could only imagine what was going on in Kuwait City before and during the war, Fort Wayne, Indiana was receiving messages on a daily basis. The vehicle was ham radio, and the driver, a brave man who sent his messages skyward, named Abdul Jabbar Marafi. Yeah, my family were very afraid. They were very afraid, and it was very risky for them, for my children, for my son, for my wife, for everybody. Marafi realized what a terrible risk he was taking by transmitting during the Iraqi occupation. But that didn't stop him from sending vivid reports about the atrocities taking place in his country. Using a sophisticated computer data link, Marafi would transmit many times up to 12 hours a day, ignoring the desperate pleas from family members who were sure Iraqi soldiers would discover his radio operation. And they told me to stop. They asked me so many times to stop, and uh, eventually they sent for me, my small boy, eight years old, to dad, please stop because uh, the people are coming and they will kill us if, you, if they find that you are sending wireless. It was on August 3rd, 1990, the day after the Iraqis moved in, that Abdul sent his first message. It was transmitted to a world-class ham station in the Netherlands, which then passed it along to Wayne TV General Manager Frank Moore in Fort Wayne. Moore immediately contacted the State Department in Washington, D.C., feeding officials there the information and thus setting up the Fort Wayne connection. I didn't believe from day to day that, uh, that he was still on the air. I mean, I really thought, and so did the State Department, uh, that today might be his last day that we'll ever hear from him. During the first three months, reports from Abdul painted an incredibly tragic picture of a country under siege. He reports about 25 to 30 children born prematurely. Ages seven to eight months are all dead because the Iraqi army took their oxygen equipment away. So sorry. In December, Abdul reports, the citizens are subject to arrest without any reason or charges. Prisoners are suffering from hunger and a lack of clothing. Many rape cases are committed against women and young girls by Iraqi soldiers or Iraqi mobs. The country is facing severe shortage of food and medicine because the occupation authorities have emptied food and medicine storage facilities and transferred them to Iraq. What he said, I am typing it. Uh... Abdul relied on dozens and dozens of people to act as reporters, bringing him eyewitness accounts on tragedies and Iraqi military moves. Abdul's cousin, Abdul Azim, acted as one of his main spotters. I, I myself was 